Hi everyone, this is Lori Smith, and I'm just uh, this is another in, it's another video in the series uh, Healing Word of Life that we're looking at biblical counseling, and I'm having I'm having uh, trouble streaming here tonight, so I'm not sure if we'll be able to to actually stream this live or not. I'll try another time here, and uh, we're looking at a at a biblical counseling manual called it's the BCM Biblical Counseling Manual put out by Adam Pulaski and Steve Lynn, and uh, this is a it's a very well, it's a large, lengthy PDF that you can get for free out there. It's also a study on emmanuels.org. But I've been looking at it for years, mainly dealing with my own healing journey. Um, I'm not a certified biblical counselor. I'm not a certified counselor of any kind. I'm uh, doing these shows mainly as a Bible study, looking at my own personal, um, really my own personal healing journey. And what I find interesting in uh, in these uh, in, in these uh, like PDFs and different things that have been put out there and dealing with the word of god god's word is life god's word is is healing and wholeness you know and if 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 we embrace it and we allow it to renew our minds a lot can be you know we can we can like we said we can do all things in christ who strengthens us i mean praise god so we're looking at a a section it's called failure to receive forgiveness uh, this is a part three, the video number three. So if you want to check the other ones out, you can go to my YouTube channel, or I've got them on a little Weebly website, uh, Healing Word of Life Weebly website. And um, but this is probably the final part here for this show, for this here, for this section called Failure to Receive Forgiveness. Uh, and this is a uh, video number three. So we'll get it. We'll get into this. So yeah, I'm not a counselor. Not offering any counseling or any advice. Uh, this is information that I'm using for my own healing journey, and so you know you have to be aware of what you're listening to and aware of of you know how you are in your healing journey when you're listening to things like this. If you're a survivor and you're listening to my work, I'm a survivor of abuse, and um, I've done a lot uh, of work on my healing journey. And uh, first, it really nothing was going to happen until I met the Lord, and uh, I met the Lord in May May 22nd, 2007, and you know, it's just been uphill all the way. And so I'd like to share with people what he's done in my life, what God has truly done in my life. And so hopefully, you know, other survivors and other people will be, you know, um, will sort of uh, encouraged, you know, to keep going and keep looking for that help, keep looking for that hope where you can find it and not to ever give up. So that's why I'm doing these shows. And, um, you know, I'm not a professional counselor or anything like that. So, but I did get a certificate. I went to, I took a little course. It was actually like a year long course with the uh, Valley Bible in the States. And it's, uh, it was under uh, Wayne Eric Johnston. He put out a, a book with uh, Wayne A. Mack called a Christian Growth and Discipleship Manual. And this is a great discipleship manual. It's really like a journal. You can go through and do the work in here. These are, these are really great. There's just so many of them all scripturally based and, Really good information for people. If you have a chance to pick this up, you know, it's not too expensive, and I really would recommend it. Um, we did several of the, I haven't gone through them all, but I've done lots of work in this book, and um, just looking at other material that's free out there online. <clears throat> so this PDF, it's called a BCM, Biblical Counseling Manual. You can get it online just by typing in Biblical Counseling Manual, uh, Adam Pulaski, Steve Lynn, L-A-H-N. Or you can go to emmanuels.org, I-M-M-A-N-U-E-L-S, emmanuels.org, and go to their store. And I think the last time I looked in the store, there's this free course. You have to go to the store to, to access it. But you click on that, it'll take you to the course, and you can take this course for free. It's the same material we're looking at right now. It's set up with the homework and with the, the journaling and with all the scriptures, and it's, it's just really good. So we'll get into this, and uh, this is part three. I wanted to look at, we're not going to go back and look at the other stuff. You can catch the other videos if you want to. Um, we're looking at a section that um, from Chronicles of Transformation by Wayne Eric Johnson, which was my teacher, and um, a biblical counseling teacher, a instructor, I guess you want to call him. He's very, oh, he's very intelligent. He's a, he is a, he's a, I want to tell you, like, I, I've never met him in person, but just taking his course and being in, in contact with him, he's a very, very, I would say he just loves, he loves God. He loves God's word. You know, he loves Jesus. He's he's into the healing and transformation process that the word of God 
has in our life and manifests in our life. And he wants to help people. That's all there is to it. So he's really, really, one guy you, you can look up, Wayne Eric Johnston. Wayne, W-A-Y-N-E, Wayne Eric, E-R-I-C-K, Johnston, J-O-H-N-S-T-O-N. And um, he's big out there in the biblical, counsel, biblical counseling world. So you can find his stuff around. And um, this is just a, a Chronicles of Transformation that he has. It's a book of, um, it's actually like a PDF, but it's, it could be a book. Um, of information that he has are like little journals that you can do. And this is sort of to do with, you know, the issue of, of failure to receive forgiveness. This is somebody, you know, it could be a situation where, you know, we, we know we've, we've come to Christ and we've given our life to Jesus, you know, we're born again, and yet we still have this condemnation over us. And we, we might be feeling, you know, someone might be feeling like, how could God forgive me for the things that I did? Or, you know, how maybe I've been forgiven for all of the stuff I did in the past, but how could God forgive me for the stuff I've done since becoming a Christian? Or, you know, these type of things. Uh, many times people who, it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with abuse, but but it can. Some people, you know, who grew up in perfectly stable homes can still develop this type of thing for, for you know, after having maybe been bullied at school or, you know, as a child or, uh, just having some problems at work and not doing well and people kind of shunning the person. I've been through all this stuff and abuse and, and whatnot where a person might feel uh, lesser than, lower than, not worthy, not worthy enough that God would would want us to, to forgive me, would want to save me or whatever. These are situations that people find themselves in. This is not uncommon. It's a, it's a sad situation really because we, we hold ourselves back. Not only are we fighting against uh, oppression, oppressive behaviors from maybe other people, you know, who have maybe put us down and hurt us or whatnot, and maybe we've even forgiven them, but we still don't feel worthy enough to receive forgiveness for ourselves. I can, I've seen this in people, and it's it's a really sad situation because we're kind of doing it, holding it. It's really from the enemy is what it is. And we know who our adversary is. We know who he is, the Satan. That's Satan. That's the devil. He is always working to, you know, he doesn't. He has no power. His power is he can't. He, he has no power in the life of a Christian, but what we give him. It's just like he had no power in the Garden of Eden, except for what Adam, what Eve gave him, and what Adam and Eve ultimately gave him, which was their allegiance. They went against God, joined with the devil, and there you go. This is the mess we have left because of it. So he's always there, like a, he, he roams around like a roaring lion, seeking those who he may devour. There's nothing he can do but what he can get us to do. And he'd love to have people sitting in condemnation saying, oh, you know, there's no way I can be forgiven and, and, and not have that really strong bond and that strong connection, strong relationship, you know, that we should have and be walking in with God, with the Lord, and with his precious Holy Spirit. And so this is really important. So remembering God's forgiveness, he says here, Colossians 2, 13, 14, vividly describes forgiveness of sin through Jesus Christ. When you were dead in your transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive together with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, having canceled out the certificate of debt, consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Now, if we believe that the word of God is true, then this is true. It's been nailed to the cross. We have been forgiven of all of our sin. And any time that we sin, like first, like you know, John, First John, you know, says, you know, if we sin, we need to confess our sin and get back into right standing with the Lord. We are going to sin. We are going to make mistakes. We are going to sin against God, unfortunately. So we don't have to be under condemnation. We confess it, and we when we repent, and we change it, right? And maybe we can't get it changed immediately, but we keep working on it. That's what I'm doing all the time. So it says, for all who believe the legal pronouncement of justification is complete, the destiny of future glory is secure. And he quotes, uh, he used, uh, references Romans 5.1. Therefore, having, actually 5.1, and two, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we exult in hope of the glory of God. Praise God. The price that Jesus paid for our sin was extreme. 
Surely our griefs he, he himself bore, is Isaiah 53, 4, 5, and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The, chas the chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. Despite all that, he says here, this is Wayne Eric Johnston, many Christians struggle with wrong thinking about sins that God has already forgiven. This may bring hurt, sadness, self-focus, or discouragement. For some, these are sins that occurred prior to their salvation. Uh, these believers spend time frequently regretting or resenting their own sins of long ago. Some are so burdened by these thoughts that they sin against God now. One eats or buys excessively to obscure the pain through pleasure. Another drinks excessively or watches lots of sports or movies to escape. But the next day, the same burden is still there. He says, others think about sins committed since coming to Christ, and they have confessed these sins to God and man and have repented. Restoration to full fellowship with the Father has occurred. Yet they think incorrectly about those sins. Some say, God has forgiven me, but I can't forgive myself. Others lament that they have not been forgiven by people. And some respond that trying to achieve great accomplishments by human strength to some some try to achieve great accomplishments by human strength to atone for their sin. Like if I just work hard enough, you know, if I just do enough for God, right? Or they choose to be depressed because they did not sur surpass the righteousness of others or are not loved by people. So what incorrect thoughts, actions, and feelings have accompanied your remembrance, uh, remembrances of past sins that have been forgiven? There is hope for you, my friend, he says. The word of God holds all you need to overcome this difficulty. Return to the cross. Observe Jesus' faithfulness to obey the Father. Trade the pride that focuses on self or worship that fixes its gaze on him. So take the, take, take the focus off self and put it on the Lord that where it belongs, onto God, because this is where it should be. The journal, this journal is designed to point you back to Jesus Christ. Uh, viewing forgiven sins against the backdrop of the Savior at Calvary will enable the transition from wrong thinking and the resulting problems to thankfulness, peace, and joy. So he says, what to do? So he says, each day read through a portion of the following scriptures. He's got lots of scriptures there. At the end of the day, complete the journal. So then you would, you would read these scriptures and, and meditate on God's word and think about it. And really, you know, not just read it. You know, sometimes we're busy. So I would say to take some time. That's what I have to do when I'm doing journaling and actually working through these things. You can't just do it while I'm thinking about my grocery list or, you know, what, I'm, what I have to clean or what I have to do or where I have to go. Um, you have to spend a few minutes and actually spend some time in it and really think about it, you know, and then, and then journal. It says record the truth in each space. Uh, continue this process until remembering God's forgiveness is your normal pattern of thinking. So it's got to become a habit. It's got to become, a, not, not a habit, a memory type thing where we would keep this in the forefront of our memory. All of, actually, really, we can. We should have God's word in our, God's word in our very thinking at all times, I think. It should be part of our lives, really. So he's got a whole lot of remembering forgive God's forgiveness scriptures. Um, this is where this is just a section of remembering God's forgiveness scriptures, just the, the cross and forgiveness. He's got Titus three three through seven. For we also once were foolish ourselves, disobedient, deceived, enslaved to various lusts and pleasures, spending our life in malice and envy, hating one another. But when the kindness of God our Savior and His love for mankind appeared, He saved us not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to His mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we would be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. I mean, praise God when you read that. So if you just read that, you just go on and, you know, turn the TV channel and make some macaroni and cheese or something, it doesn't really mean much. But when you sit and you think about that, this was a gift the ultimate gift. You know, this was, this is, there could be no greater gift of love. There could be no greater demonstration of love. You know, you hear people say that, you hear preachers and stuff say that, but, but it's important to sit and think about it in your own space, in your own time. No greater gift of love than that. So that we could be brought back, you know, not, not anything that we've done, just pure mercy and grace and love. You know, for somebody like myself who did not experience very much love as a child, it's a big deal. I almost have a hard time with it because I, for a long time, could not accept love. And so I'm working on that. 
So it's hard for me to think that God would love, could really love me that much, that he would send his son to die for me in my place. I believe it. I receive it. But I know, you know, for many people out there who may be coming from, some, just from having, you know, being such so, so downtrodden, I would say, by whoever in life, you know, or just downtrodden by life itself. <laughs> um, you know, it's hard to sometimes to think about that. You know, that he thought, Here's, here's what I do. This is where I go with this. God thought that I was worth it. Just me. Not let alone everyone. See, Jesus Christ died for everyone. Not everyone will accept him as their Lord and Savior. There will be those that, do, that don't and will perish because of their lack of accepting him as, as their Lord and Savior. It's too bad. But, he, you know, he died for all. And so... I thought I was worth it. When I think about that, I get happy because nobody in my family, when I was growing up, ever thought I was worth anything. I was really told that I was worth nothing. And so I was made to feel that way. And I was actually told that and actually shown that throughout my life that I wasn't worth anything. And so if I, I, I like to keep that in my mind. You know, God thought that I was worth it, that, that his son should die on the cross and take my place. So that I could live and be resurrected with him in this newness of life, this recreated spirit, to live eternally with him. Hallelujah. Now, praise God. Now, that just makes me happy. And so, you know, it's a big deal what Jesus Christ did for us. And so we, are, we don't have to live under condemnation. God thought we were worth it. Amen. And do I still sin? Yes. Be a lie to say no. I don't think there's anybody on the planet that, that can actually say that, uh, that they don't sin or that they haven't since they became a Christian. And we're all doing it. We all need to get into the word and allow the word to renew our minds, which is really, a, for some people, especially like myself, a difficult thing. <laughs> because I have a lot of damage in there that I need to, that, that I'm holding on to, little strongholds, right? And so it's toxic stuff. So I gotta, I'm allowing God to slowly work through this stuff. It isn't happening overnight. But it's there, and once it's changed, it's done. So this is good. It's a healed, it's, it, it is healing. But for me, it didn't happen overnight. But, um, you know, it's great. Praise God. They also reference here, um, Wayne Eric Johnston, Romans 6, 3 through 6. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And 1 Corinthians 15, 1-5. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, in which also you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as a of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Sabbath, then to the twelve. So Christ died for our sins, and it was and it pleased God to have to have his his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, die for the sin of the world. To save to save all who would come and be saved. All who will accept this sacrifice, this this gift, this, this... I know, when I was born again, let me tell you, I was like, I just won the lottery. The biggest lottery there could ever be. Eternal life in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. You know, praise God. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. So they go on to, he goes on, there's more scriptures here regarding sins committed prior to salvation. And also regarding sins committed since faith in the gospel. And then he talks about remembering God's forgiveness journal. So after we go through these scriptures, you know, he says, okay, uh, we're supposed to journal. Let's say we were doing this um, for two weeks or something, journaling how, you know, how we're doing with this being, uh, receiving 
our, for our forgiveness from God. And he says, um, what forgiven sin was I tempted to remember today? And so we might be thinking about something that we did two weeks ago, or we might be thinking about something we did today, or we might be thinking about something that we did before we were born again. Right? So what forgiven sin was I tempted to remember today? And what I thought, you know, what I felt, what I thought about it, what I felt, what scripture says about God's view of that sin, uh, my choices for how to deal with the memory of that forgiven sin. So what, what were my choices and what are my choices for how to deal with the memory of that forgiven sin? Am I just going to hold it and keep it and make it a, a stronghold in there? Or am I just going to set it down, lay it down at the foot of the cross and say, Lord, I know I've been forgiven of this and I know I'm no longer under condemnation. And so I'm free. I'm free in Christ. It doesn't mean I'm free to sin. <clears throat> I need to confess my sin when I sin and to make it right and to repent and to turn from that and return to you but, and then you know, get back into fellowship with you. But I am no longer under condemnation. I've been set free. And he who's been set free in Christ is free indeed. Amen. So, you know, how am I going to choose to deal with these things, right? Choice is a big deal. We have a choice. God gave us free will. And so we have to learn to make the right choices. I'm doing a lot of work in that right now. I'll show you some stuff before we go. Uh, so prayer. If I did right, then my prayer would be, prayer if I did right, right, would be my thanks to God for his help and his forgiveness of my sin. My thanks to Jesus Christ for his willing death for my sin and his ongoing intercession. And thanks for God's help and thanks for his forgiveness of sin. Or if I did wrong, deal with the sin. As the word prescribes, confess sin, repent from choosing to imagine guilt for sin he has forgiven, and ask for help to remember the truth of the word about forgiveness. So that's what we can do. We can get it right, you know. So we can do this, uh, you know, day after day after day until we get it, until we, until we remember God's forgiveness in our life, and be transformed by the by the word of the Lord. Hallelujah! It is transforming. It's absolutely transforming. It's completely changed my life. I mean, I'm still in this flesh body. I'm still sitting here, um, you know, doing the same, sort of some of the same things I was doing before, but I'm in the Word all the time. And it changed my heart, it changed my whole, uh, did change a lot of the way that I thought. Because I was coming from, uh, really, I like to say behind the eight ball, really, you know, I was coming from a situation that was very toxic, very obnoxious, very hateful, and I thought I was a good person, you know, because I had kind of grown up and learned how to deal with people uh, in order to keep a job, right? I figured if I didn't want to get fired from every job that I had, you know, or get thrown in jail or, you know, do time and things like that, I was going to have to learn how to live in society and behave myself. And I wanted to have friends. I wanted to be good to people. I wanted them to be good to me. But a lot of my thought processes were still very much self-preservation and toxic. And so when I was born again, you know, this relief came over me that I didn't have to carry this on my own anymore, and that I was forgiven, and that, you know, I've been given the greatest gift of all. Praise God. You know, my new life in Christ Jesus. And so i just allowing, it's taken me nine years now, because I was born, in two, born again in 2007. So it's, you know, we're going on almost 10 years now. Um, so it's taken a long time. But God has truly been working to change the Word of God and the Holy Spirit, praise God. He's been working to um, change those toxic thought processes and the, the choices that I would make. Um, and I'm still working through some. And just dealing with people. And take it from a very messy situation to a really good situation where I'm stable. You know, things in my life are very stable. Even though my husband's terminally ill, uh, you know, I've got a lot of stuff going on around me that, you know, most people would consider very, very stressful. And I can sit here with the peace of God, with my stomach very calm. I'm not, my stomach's not in knots. You know, I have to call, you know, a lot of times call the ambulance for my husband. Or, you know, always trying to, you know, just, you know, in the natural, most people would be like, I don't know how you do that. You know, um, I just give it up to God, you know, because is if we truly believe that God is, is 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 for us and not against us and we truly if we believe that that what he said in his word is true that his promises are true then he will provide 
And so I need to learn how to trust. And trust is a big issue for me, was from growing up the way that I did. So, I'm, you know, he's had me out on oh, the edge, and, the, and there was nowhere else I could go but to him. He put me on the edge so that I would have to come to him. And I'm thankful. Let me tell you, because I was running from him my whole entire life. So what I've been doing lately is looking at this stuff. I don't know if this may interest you or may not, but I find this is really, really helpful for me. I'm working on it right now. I've got uh, Who Switched Off My Brain. Let me show you the book here. This is uh, Dr. Caroline Leaf, Who Switched Off My Brain, Controlling Toxic Thoughts and Emotions. This is really good stuff. This is kind of just, you know, it's more scientific than biblical counseling. But when you get down to the nuts and bolts, it is the very thing. It is taking a look with the Word of God, that God's Word is true, and every word that He said is true, and that we can renew our minds. But we have to do it. No one's going to do it for us. And we can't do it on our own without and apart from God, His Word, His precious Holy Spirit. So this is a great book. It comes with a workbook. I got all kinds of stuff here. I, I, I just saw her stuff. She's out there. Dr. Caroline Leaf. Um, really, really good stuff. Switch on your brain. The key to peak happiness, thinking, and health. This is all biblical-based stuff here. This is not just man's idea of what we should do. This is uh, biblical. She's a Christian. And she's out here saying, science is finally catching up with God's word. See, And they are. Praise God. It's never God's word catching up with science. Science is catching up with God's word. So my brain, by, by reading the word, staying in the word, you know, meditating on the word, singing the word. I sing the word all the time to the Lord. And uh, just sing praises to his name and, and this type of thing. Just keeps us in this uh, just abiding, you know, like, like Jesus said, abide in me. And I'll abide in you, and the Father abides in you, and you abide in the Father. Father abides in me, and I abide in the Father, and we all abide together. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Stay in the Word. Stay in it. Get some of these helpful things if you can. Some of these are a little expensive, you know. But you can see her stuff for free if you go to her website, Dr. Caroline Leaf. And just look her up on the, on the web. And get this information and really allow it to change change what's going on for some of these negative things that we might have going on in our life, right? Get some help. If, you know, if you're struggling and you're a person who's really struggling with a lot of issues or even one or two issues that just seem to, it's like, just don't know where you're going to go, what you're going to do, reach out and get some help. Do not allow yourself to be destroyed by this, you know. This is why I'm doing these shows, you know. I just want people to... Realize that there is hope out there. There's help out there. There's good people out there, uh, believe it or not. And uh, I found that out. I knew that a long time ago, actually. I've met good people all my life. And, you know, there are good people out there. You have to look for trustworthy people, you know, and be careful who you give your information to. And, uh, you know, you find somebody trustworthy, you know, you get some help. You know, don't try to do this on your own. I was always running from God I, and basically running from all my relationships, quitting jobs, you know, having a hard time staying in any kind of relationship at all with anybody. And I used to run from God. And when God finally met me head on, he could, I couldn't go anywhere else. I, I was either, it really, there was no other choice for me. Um, you know, he finally chased me down. <laughs> May 22nd, 2007. I'm really happy that he did. Because he said, live. Live. That's what God's all about. God is life. God, you know, he created this. He created this life for us so that we could know him. We could have this relationship with him. Praise the Lord. So, yeah, run to God. Don't run away from him. Run to him. Praise God. We'll catch you guys, um, hopefully, God willing, in a couple of weeks. And like I said, you know, don't ever give up. Just keep looking for that hope where you can find it. We'll talk, we'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.